So thank you so much. Quick round of applause for making it out here. For all these companies that we're going to be uh, having walk across here, uh, it's 2 o'clock. We want to keep it on time because we have a lot of great stuff to get through. So this is where we are in the schedule. I'm going to give a couple of opening remarks, and then we're going to have Jeff, the new president of Y Combinator, come up here and kind of give his, his talk on YC and work at its startups. Um, and then we're just going to roll right into the first half of the pitches. So, you know, we have 40 founders here who have all started startups, who have all gone through Y Combinator and raised money. And they are super excited. You saw it out there. They're super excited to meet with you, tell you about their company, tell you about their business. More importantly, because you guys are engineers, tell you about their product, what stack they're using, and hopefully get you excited. Because I think that what they're doing, each and every one of them, they got an amazing mission, and they would be fortunate to have you on their team. So we'll start with the first 20. It's going to be like demo day, two minutes each. We're going to try to move pretty fast. And then we're going to have a quick intermission. We're going to do the next 20. And then after that, hopefully around 4 o'clock, we're all going to move back into that room. So if you found some founders that you really liked or products that you really liked, make sure you can go and meet them. Make sense? Yeah? All right. Uh, all right. But first, hi. I'm Ryan. I have sent, I hope, each and every one of you an email. It felt a little bit like spam. I feel a little bad. I hope you forgive me. But I'm glad you're here. And my job at Y Combinator is to help these founders, as well as the broader YC ecosystem, find and work with amazing engineers. Why would I want a job like this? So when I graduated from college, I had the chance to be the seventh engineer at Salesforce.com. And I got to work directly with Mark Benioff, Parker Harris, the founders. I got to build things that I would not have been able to build anywhere else. It's a 50-person company. One day, Mark comes up to me. He's like, I think we need to build something that is for like developers, not just these salespeople. What is it? Right? And so I got to build the API. Right? I got to build an API fresh out of college. I got to build the first marketing suite. I got to build their first internal billing system twice. And I got to do things that like, I would never have been able to do and learn more than I would, never, than I would have ever been able to do probably throughout my entire career. Right? And so I obviously think that working at startups is amazing. And I am super excited to be helping these founders and these companies work with you guys. And the other thing about my job is I get to like, engage with so many engineers through colleges, through people who sign up for work at a startup. And I genuinely want to help each and every one of you in all transparency, obviously, I would love for you to work at a YC company, but I'm open to chat about lots of things if you guys are interested. So things you can ask me about, things I love chatting about. I love chatting about engineering, right? Again, I was an engineer at Salesforce. I was there for eight years. I loved it so much because I got to grow with the company. It was an amazing experience. And then from there, I got to go to another startup and do it again even smaller. I ran an engineering team at a company called Zora that went public last year. And there I was an engineering manager. And again, one of the most personally and professionally satisfying things was finding great people, putting them in roles where they would just excel and crush it. They learned a ton, helped the company, and a couple of them are actually here today. And so I'm just super excited to be working with each and every one of you. Um, if you guys want to chat about engineering careers, process, you know, moving into engineering management, I'm here to chat. I also love talking about products and platforms. So most recently, I was a PM at Lyft. Uh, I got to be the PM of the platform, PM of the uh, identity, and PM of the IPO. Yes, you need product managers and engineering teams to take a company public. Uh, and then I did partner engineering and developer advocacy at uh, Lyft, or at Twitter. So if you guys are curious to know what it takes to get into PM, what it's like, you want to make that transition, or if you just want to grouse about your product manager, I'm more than happy to chat about those things. And last but not least, I love talking about startups. I work at YC. I started a company that went through Y Combinator. It was an amazing experience. I started another company after that. My entire career has largely been working at startups, big and small. And that's what we have represented here today. We have a lot of bigger ones and smaller ones. So hopefully, you guys get to mix with a lot of them. And for what it's worth, I got an MBA at MIT with a focus on entrepreneurship and innovation. So again, if you want to talk about startups, you're thinking about an idea or you know, you're curious to know whether or not an MBA could actually help, I'm here to chat. Here's my email address. You probably already have it. But seriously, if you want to get coffee, if you want to stop by the office, if you just want to chat, if you're from uh, abroad, 
you know, we can find time and I want to see how I can be helpful. Cool? Awesome. So we're going to have Jeff come up here and chat a bit about uh, his thoughts on YSC as the new uh, president of Y Combinator. Give him a round of applause. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, everyone, for coming out this amazing event. I love this event so much because it has the potential to change trajectories of of not just you guys, but of the hopefully YC companies that you join. Uh, I was really glad that Ryan asked me to, to talk a little bit because it caused me to reflect on, on my journey from being an engineer through a whole bunch of other changes. Um, and I, I, I thought a lot about what it meant for me to, when I finally joined a startup. I'd like to talk a little bit about that. Um, but I also have been reflecting, I, I like talking about all those same things that Ryan likes to talk about, about startups, about engineering, about the trajectory of your life. So if you guys want to reach out to me, I am more than happy to find time to grab coffee. I probably can't do it with every single one of you. Mostly I talk to people about why they should start a startup, but I think joining a startup is probably the second best thing. So I was reflecting, especially based on what I did in my career, about joining a startup versus working for the man. So who here actually works at a startup today? Who wants to work at a startup? Right. Who wants to start a startup? OK, so someone who wants to work at a startup, why? Anybody? Growth. Your growth? Both. Anybody else? Why work at a startup? It's exciting. Risk. <laughs> Risk, right? These are the best years of your life, right? You're the most energetic, the most creative. Most of you are the most free and unencumbered that you'll ever be in your life. Now is the time to take risk, even though it's not that much risk, and we can talk more about that. So you should choose carefully now, right? Choose carefully. Maximize time. It's the ultimate resource that we all have too little of. Maximize your time now and maximize your future. I'm going to talk a little bit about the future and why doing a startup today is probably more meaningful and more important than maybe in the past. Do you guys know this whole movie franchise called Back to the Future? Familiar with that? Michael J. Fox goes 30 years back into the past. And basically, the only thing that changed was the TV was black and white instead of color. It was pretty much the same world. He was fine. He, he was on his skateboard, and he skateboarded around and, and changed the future, I guess. Can you guys imagine what it would be like for you to go 30 years in the past? You would be lost. No internet. No mobile phones. How many of you own a laptop? Put them away. All gone. Nothing. Would, how would you survive? It would be pretty different. Now, go 30 years in the future and come back to today. What's that going to be like? Change is not slowing down. It's speeding up. You'll probably all be pair programming with an AI that makes suggestions, fixes your bugs before you even make them. Maybe it helps you structure your code better. Or maybe it'll be the other way around, and you'll be looking over the shoulder of the AI and trying to make suggestions as it writes code. But the man's tempting, right? Yeah, yeah. Good salary. A publicly traded stock. Maybe you'll get RSUs. Great benefits. Maybe you'll work at Apple in a cool, round building. And there's lots of infrastructure and support. You might even be able to join a softball league. Pretty great. And startups, they suck. They're hard. It's stressful. A company could die any moment. You work long hours with little vacation, little support, and probably worthless stock. 
how's my sales job going so far? But remember in that uncertain future, there's no such thing as lifetime employment. Most of you will probably have five to seven jobs in your life. There's little control over what you do and less freedom. And for the most part, and wait until I talk about my career, your impact will be minimal. Minimal. Think about the impact that Ryan talked about having at this amazing company that we think of as a franchise, as the man in Salesforce. Probably it'll be boring. Usually it's kind of boring because it's less innovative, less interesting. So what matters to you? By the way, I know I'm preaching to the choir, but it's nice to reflect on it a little bit. You want to maximize your impact, your own satisfaction. Nothing is more important to that satisfaction than with whom you are working, the people, the team. And nothing bonds you, I'll talk more about that, to a team than working at a startup, than fighting a good fight, than being at war. And maybe you'll work at the future slack, and maybe your stock will go public at a $22 billion valuation. That would be cool, right? And for those of you, and there are a good number of you who are interested in being a founder, there is no better path to being a founder than to seeing what it's like on the ground at a startup. Startups build winners. It's the best thing you'll ever do. It's the best memory you'll ever have in your employment. You'll build amazing skills like self-reliance and resilience and so many more, better communications. You saw how good Ryan was. You should have seen him 10 years ago. He was probably terrible. <laughs> You'll do more, and you will make a difference. You will matter. It's the tightest you'll ever be with a team. Think about what Ryan said about talking to Benioff. Think about in your current job, if you're working at a big company, how many degrees of separation there are between you and the CEO. More distressing, especially when I consider my career, is the number of degrees of separation between you and the actual customer and user of your software. So yeah, there's incredible highs and lows at a startup, but the highs feel great and the victory is sweeter than anything. So let me tell you a brief slice of my history. Um, I don't think I had actually heard the word startup before I got out to California in the early 80s and worked at HP. We literally called it the fur line rut. I'm not making that up. When I was at HP, I worked in the operating systems group originally on an operating system that's gone, on the equivalent of the shell that's gone. Now, look, from that long ago, it's ancient history. Maybe it would have been gone anyway. But the impact was nothing even then, making small changes to a shell. Later, I did some really cool work on TCP IP. Frickin' hacked TCP IP. Broke TCP IP because HP was going to have a different TCP IP than everyone else. That project was canceled and killed before I even left HP. I finally escaped. And here, things started to change. I was a presence provider for the World Wide Web. You don't even know what that is. I went to companies and brought them online, created a website, got them connected to the web. I talked to customers. I shook their hand. That was radical for me. I wrote software that they used directly. That became even more true when I had my next startup because that one failed because I'd picked the wrong co-founder. That happens. Here, I wrote the code. I did customer support. I was the product person. By the way, the customer support I did for this product, which was a person lookup and free web page service, was so cool. It was all in Emacs. And I built it all myself. I really actually should have made that the product because it was a much better product than the actual thing. But that led, in the end, to me working with the best team I've ever worked with as an engineer. 
Dave Nakayama and Anand Tanali, Talani and Larry Drebus and Brian Woods pictured in this picture actually built Rocket Mail, which became Yahoo Mail in the late 90s. But let me tell you, that was a cool success story, but like we were acquired, but this was way late in my life and my career. I acquired a wife and a kid along the way as well. Pretty late. It's not an impossible story. And for those of you who are in that stage of life like I was, it's awesome. You can do it. But let's think about how to choose a startup. And I'll leave you with those thoughts. OK, so you should check out work at a startup, right? You should come to the Startup Expo. OK, check. But think about the company that you're going to join. Find a problem that you really care about that matters to you. Find a team that you like. You know, uh, when we talk to, to founders about who they should hire, we often invoke what we call the Collison rule after Patrick Collison, who said, when I hire someone, I think about coming in on a Sunday. And when you work at a startup, you will come in on a Sunday. And finding this person there is the only person in the office. And I think to myself, am I really happy or am I kind of sad? You should think of it the same way. Think of coming in on a Sunday with the team that you're looking to join. How happy are you? Search for a mission. Search for something that, for which you'd sacrifice. So research. Be proactive. If you can, get a referral. You're meeting a whole bunch of people here. It's a really tight community, the startup community. You'll know somebody who knows somebody who works at the company you want to work at. And think about the variety of sizes and sectors available to you in the startup world. And just remember, when you interview at a startup, it is really hard to resist someone who's good, but that knows you and really wants to be part of you. Take that approach, and you'll get to join the startup of your dreams. So Ryan said I talk about YC, so I really ought to. YC has been around, as many of you know, since 2005. So this is our 14th year. And in that time, we funded over 2,000 companies. So this is the right place to start, right? This is the right place to think about joining a startup. We have over 4,000 alumni founders, the, by far the largest startup network in the world. The companies have a combined valuation of over $150 billion. And the only reason I include that is to show that these really are good companies. There are a host of really solid companies. Over 100 companies that we have funded so far today have a, a valuation of over $100 million. And these companies do create jobs. Only the top 100 companies have created over th or nearly 30,000 jobs, many more for the rest. This is a great path into the startup. And as Ryan says, I, I hope you find your way to a startup. I hope it's a YC startup, but I hope it's a startup because I think that's the right trajectory for many of you, maybe most of you, because it'll give you the skills that you need for the rest of your life and the rest of your career. And more than that, it'll give you the satisfaction, give you a satisfaction that you can't repeat anywhere else. So good luck to everyone. I hope you have a great expo. Thank you. All right. We, uh, I'm just going to switch over to one more slide. You guys should have gotten an email. How many of you guys got one email with a magic link? Raise your hand. It's my way of getting you to all stretch. All right, so anyway, now is the time to open up the email, to click on that link. And if you have done so, it will open up the directory, right? You can also type in this URL really quickly. If you can actually hit this QR code, I chatted from back there, it worked on an Android phone. Um, yeah, I know, QR codes, it's a thing. So if you log in, you will be taken immediately to the directory. In the directory, we have every single company that's pitching in order, right? So you can follow along. But more importantly, there is a like button. You know, we got some software, we got engineers working hard on this, but like, there's a like button, and when you click on it, it will send a message to the founders, and they will reply back, 
right? So that's the way of expressing interest. The other way is if you click the like button, you can bookmark it so that way when you walk over there, you know who you wanted to find and you can find them. Does that make sense? Is everyone logging in? Can I give you like a five second countdown and then get it going? Five, four, you guys excited? Three, two, that was kind of weak. Come on, you guys excited? Yeah. All right, all right, one. So let's get it going. Thank you. Hi, I'm Vijay. I'm the founder and CEO of Airx Health. We provide remote monitoring for patients with chronic lung disease. Airx Health is an opportunity to save lives using your engineering skills. I'm a Stanford trained doctor and I've been part of two healthcare IPOs in the last decade. I recruited a team of three Y Combinator founders from various batches and together we're taking on one of the biggest problems in healthcare, which is chronic lung disease. It is set to become the number one cause of hospitalizations in America in the next few years. We have developed a software-based solution that checks in with elderly patients on a daily basis, and we help doctors catch and treat issues early to keep these patients healthy and out of the hospital. We are live, and we're generating revenue. We're still in stealth mode, so you won't see much about us online. However, we did raise an oversubscribed round with some amazing investors, including Floodgate, Village Global, and Acme Capital. Here's our tech stack, and we're using it to save lives. We're Airx Health. We provide a meaningful way to save lives with every code push. We support the growth of all of our engineers with access to renowned mentors in Silicon Valley and development stipends. We're building a diverse team, and we look forward to chatting with you. Thank you. Hi guys, um, my name is Tanay. I'm co-founder and CEO at Athelis. Athelis uses computer vision and um, microfluidics in order to in order to do instant point of care blood mo blood monitoring. Uh, that's our device over there. That's our microfluidic channel. We've trained tens of convolutional neural networks in order to segment hundreds of cell types um, and classify those cell types using their morphology in order to generate something called a complete blood count, one of the most frequently run blood tests in our healthcare system today. Here's a quick video of how Athelis works. Um, our product is actively deployed in hundreds of clinics today, and we're generating tons of revenue. Uh, you take a finger prick, put it on the test strip. It's our test strip right there. Stick that into the device. And within a couple minutes, the doctor, um, the oncologist, or the care provider receives a blood cell count uh, using our computer vision backend. Athelis just received a major FDA clearance, um, a historic FDA clearance, I should say, a few months ago. It's the first single drop test for neutropenia in history. Uh, and it's a breakthrough for the 10 million immunocompromised patients in this country. That includes cancer patients, people on immunosuppressive drugs, people who are chronically uh, immunosuppressed and at risk for infections. And it's the first ever deep learning based test cleared by the FDA. And it really builds the foundation for all of the new types of blood tests we're going to build to detect everything from a cancer all the way to an allergic reaction. We're contracted uh, with some of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the country companies in the country um, with contracts valued in the hundreds of millions of dollars and we're actively deployed now in thousands of patients across hundreds of clinics. Um, and we've raised 20 million plus dollars to date with some great VCs like Sequoia Capital, um, we have the backing of NVIDIA and obviously the great folks here at Y Combinator. Um, so if you want to build tech that saves lives and work with an incredible team of engineers, please reach out. Uh, my name's Tanay. You can email us at founders at ethelis.com. Thank you so much. Twenty percent of female founders have been sexually assaulted or sexually coerced by an investor. 
Less than 20% of them ever report, and the main reason why is because they don't want to hurt the future of their company. The few victims who do come forward do so to protect others because they worry that they're not the only one. And chances are they're right because 90% of sexual assaults are committed by repeat offenders. My name is Anjana Rajan, and I'm the Chief Technology Officer of Callisto. And we've built sexual misconduct reporting software for victims, where if two or more victims have the same perpetrator, we connect the victims together and their options for taking action. Here's how it works. A user creates a time-stamped encrypted record of their assault, including the unique identity of their perpetrator. That data is held in escrow that, so that nobody, not even Callisto, can see their information unless a second victim names the same perpetrator. If there's a match, they are connected with the legal options counselor, who is an attorney who can protect their conversations under attorney-client privilege. The options counselor is an advocate who helps them understand all of their options and takes them on a path to pursue justice. We launched four years ago on college campuses and we're not gonna stop until we serve every survivor in the country. The problem we're solving is one of the most important human rights problems, but we're also building a bleeding edge security platform too, because the problem we're solving is how can we stop the spread of sexual violence while protecting the privacy and civil liberties of both the victim and the accused. Our stack is built in Node and Angular, but we're looking for a diverse group of engineers who can play around a complex stack. Our area of expertise is in advanced cryptography and trauma-informed design, so come visit us at our table so you can show you, you can see a demo of our work. We're backed by some incredible investors, including Greylock Partners, the Skoll Foundation, and Google.org. Today, I invite you to join our team of brave and brilliant engineers who are building the tools for survivors to speak truth to power and advance justice. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Jonathan, and I'm co-founder and CTO at Checker. So at Checker, we started the company five years ago, and we do background checks. Now, our mission is much deeper. We want to help fairness and bring transparency to the process, and help millions of people get access to jobs. Every month, we do 1.5 million checks and growing fast. We help companies like Uber and Lyft hiring their drivers, but growing into on-demand and also more mainstream companies. The team is 300 people strong, and we are doubling every year, which is super exciting. Uh, there's a lot of growth, new teams forming, new, uh, new career growth for, for individuals. And the best part, we're making money. We are profitable. Yeah. Uh, on the engineering side, so the engineering team is really building the future of our product and directly tied to our mission. Uh, and we do that with identity matching, which is really the core for accuracy and machine learning. Uh, most of the team are doing back-end work, so really reliable uh, and a um, lot of integration with data sources. And everything that we do impact millions of users and thousands of customers that use our product for their core operations. Um, a bug at Checker is very costly. Thank you. Come, come chat with us. Do you like video games? How many of you have heard of League of Legends, PUBG, Fortnite, Counter-Strike, and Dota? Okay, but do you know all of these billion dollar games were originally created by individual video game modders who have otherwise never had a chance to create video games professionally and sell them, unless they get recruited by big companies. And that's why we're here. Dreamcraft is a platform to help these people millions of them create and sell their games. And this is no easy task. That means we need three revolutionary products. We need a simulation that can render beautiful worlds, that can power any sort of gameplay. We need an editor that allow people to create content on top of that simulation. And we need to release a platform to distribute all of these content and sell them. So a simulation, an editor, a platform. A simulation, 
an editor, and a platform. Okay, I think you get it. It's one product. And we're a startup, so I was told to talk about the tech stack, but we can figure it out. <laughs> because we are determined. <laughs> and join us because it's super fun to work on games. And it's super fun to help other people. It's really satisfying watching our customers using our tool to create great stuff. And the best of it is, what if some of them become one of these? We're Dreamcraft. We help people create and sell their games. And here's a glance of what's possible with our technology right now. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Julia, the CEO and co-founder of Dynetti Technologies, and we are working on building authentication for mobile devices, starting with a credit card scanning SDK. Um, so starting with the founding team, me and my co-founder, Lena, are both ex-Uber. Um, we built the credit card scanner in the Uber app, saw some great results, and that's why we decided to start our company. Um, our first engineer, Jack, is somewhere out here as well. He was a former early Android engineer at WhatsApp. Um, so more on the product, it's become possible very recently to optimize an advanced computer vision model to run entirely on device. And that's what Dynetti is leveraging to build authentication products to help mobile apps keep their platform safe and um, keep the experience secure for their, uh, for their customers. Um, so we launched the product very recently. We launched it at the end of January, uh, very quickly signed on a ton of enterprise customers, uh, raised a seed round from some exceptional investors, and are now building out our team. Um, in terms of the tech stack, uh, there's really two components, deep learning and mobile. So on the deep learning side, the back end is in Python, and the front end is in TensorFlow Lite. And for mobile, the back end is in server-side Swift, actually, and the front end is in uh, Swift and Java. So it's a great opportunity for anyone who's interested in any of these uh, technologies. So why should you join us, or why would this be a good fit? Um, the first reason is that if you're excited about our mission of making the internet safer by tying identities to people who are committing criminal acts online. Uh, the second is if you're interested in maximizing your autonomy and impact at your next role. Um, if you're interested in doing this and if you're interested in starting your own startup, I would strongly recommend you work at a very early stage startup that is less than 10 people. We're building our founding team right now and each of our founding engineers will have an outsized impact on the culture and the future of the company. And finally, uh, I think we sit at an interesting intersection of two high growth fields, um, real-time mobile, uh, real-time fraud detection on mobile and also deep learning on the edge. So if you're interested in either of those, it would be a really good opportunity for you. Um, we're kind of at an unmarked table near the blue truck <laughs> in the other room. So if you want to talk to us, come find us there. And you can also reach me uh, by email at julia at Dynetti. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Daniele. I'm one of the founders of FAIR. FAIR is a wholesale marketplace that allows independent retailers to find products to sell into their stores. Now, just some numbers first. We started a company two and a half years ago. We raised over $100 million from Sequoia, YC Growth, and Lightspeed, and others like Kozla. And we're one of the fastest growing YC companies ever. But those are just numbers, and I want to tell you why this matters. We believe at FAIR that the future is local. What does that mean? We want to help small retailers compete with Amazon and Walmart, providing curated experiences to their customers and help local communities thrive. Uh, today, they are not equipped to do that. We want to help them through technology, through our wholesale marketplace, where they can find the best products to sell. Consumers say that all else has been equal. They'll rather shop at a local store. So this is what we are trying to tap into. Uh, in terms of our tech stack, we are built on a modern tech stack that we built uh, over the past two and a half years based on Kotlin, Java, Swift uh, for the iOS and Kotlin again for the Android app, React on the, on the web. So I think all technologies that you'll be delighted to code into. 
Uh, and in general, like, what would you like to work at uh, FAIR? So marketplaces are incredibly challenges businesses to build because you have to satisfy two different customers at each point in time. So the, uh, uh, the intellectual challenge is very high. We, are, we are really care about good engineering practices. My co-founder Marcel and I were the first engineers on the Cash App team. We built that from the ground up and we took all those learnings with us. So things like automated testing and uh, you know, deploying often and writing code that is readable, not only write one's code. And all those things uh, we really care deeply about. And so I think you'll find an environment that uh, it's a delight to work with. And additionally, data is very important to us. I'm the chief data officer, Marcelo, my co-founder, the CTO. We're both important parts of the company. And so you'll find an environment where you can A-B test and deploy quickly. So uh, come uh, help us uh, build the future of local retail and help small, small businesses thrive. Thank you. Hello, I am Mike, one of the co-founders of Give Campus, and we are a platform that helps schools raise money. Fundamentally, we think education is important, and unfortunately in the US, a lot of the money that helps run schools comes from private donors. I'm sure a lot of you have graduated, have gotten phone calls, direct mail, and I'm sorry, it's 2019, it should be done on the web. It should be easy to give online in a transparent way so that you know where your money is going, and hopefully social as well. Right now, we focus exclusively on schools because that's what we care about and allows us to build the product that's best for them. We have former Facebook, Amazon, and Intel engineers, and on the business side, we have a lot of former fundraisers from schools, so we have a lot of empathy for our end user. We're, our current team is over 50% women. We're, keep, we're a team of 28. We're hoping to expand to about 50 by the end of this year, and we've been profitable since early 2016. Our tech stack is pretty basic. It's Ruby on Rails, Postgres, Heroku, front end it's vanilla JS and React. And we're, we're headquartered in DC, so we're hiring everything in DC, literally everything. Uh, and in San Francisco, we're looking for a tech lead or someone who's more a senior IC. So come talk to us if you want and you care about education. Thanks. Hi. I'm David, CEO and co-founder of Glide. Glide makes apps from spreadsheets. Uh, here's a quick demo. In Glide, you choose new app. You pick a sheet from your Google Drive. Glide creates a default app that you can configure with components that bind to the data in the spreadsheet and sync bi-directionally. Then you can customize it further, changing the layout and theme, adding media like photos, and then you can give it to your employees. So for example, in a bakery, you could stay on top of inventory. We launched four months ago. We were just in the last YC batch, and we already have thousands of non-technical software developers, we call them, building and distributing apps every month for basically everything that you would use a spreadsheet for. This becomes a business because a lot of people don't know about a phenomenon we call dark apps, but enterprises spend a lot of money building internal private mobile apps that never go to app stores, and this is the market we want to go after. Um, a fav one of my favorite customer stories just from last week, uh, the largest real estate developer in St. Louis, Missouri, has always run their business on seven spreadsheets and all of their employees carried laptops. One non-technical employee built a Glide app that they open 30 times a day. They don't carry laptops anymore and it powers their business. Uh, our broader ambition is to basically convert the billion spreadsheet users into in the world into productive software developers. Uh, like I said, we are a young company um, we're just seven people, and we're looking for our eighth, so including you, more than half the company is here today. We have amazing investors uh, and advisors, including the CEOs of GitHub and Figma. Uh, we're on a WAM C++ stack, full C++, top to bottom on the front end, back end, so if you love C++, you'll love Glide. Of course, I'm kidding, we're a TypeScript. <laughs> Glad that worked. All right, <laughs> TypeScript, uh, React, and Firebase, so very, very standard stuff. Um, and something really remarkable about Glide is we're, we're half designers, half engineers. Um, so at our booth, you'll find uh, printouts of the upcoming designs that you'll actually be working on if you join us as a front-end engineer. So we'd love to show you them and, and uh, talk to you about them, and thank you. I can't wait to work with you.
Hey everyone, I'm Greg and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Goodly. And Goodly is student loan repayment as an employee benefit, which was just named as the hottest employee benefit by Forbes. And the way that it works is it functions in a similar manner to a 401k, except we help employers pay off their employees' student loans. And it's something that's been growing like crazy in just the last couple of years. Um, this slide we actually have to update because when we submitted it, it was about 4% of companies in the United States that were doing it. This was just revised um, and it was announced that 8% or the percentage of companies offering this benefit has doubled in just the last 12 months. And it's projected to grow up to 32% of every single company in the United States or 32% of all companies in just the next two years. So in terms of how it actually functions, um, the employees will continue to make their regular monthly payment. And then using Goodly software, employers will make a secondary payment on top of that directly to the student loan debt. And by doing this, we can help the average employee pay off their student loans 30% faster than they otherwise would. So we're gonna be hiring for our first full stack engineer. So currently my CTO, who's also my co-founder, is heading up our engineering team. So we're looking to rapidly build out both our sales and engineering teams, starting with our first full stack engineer. So currently our team is comprised of sales growth and Hamant, who's our CTO and heading the engineering team as well. So we'd love to bring on one of you as our first full-time engineer outside of the founding team. And in addition to um, having a really great founding team, um, we're also very fortunate to be backed by some of the world's leading investors, including both Y Combinator and also Norwest. So Norwest's investment in Goodly was led by one of their managing partners, Jeff Crow, who's been on the Forbes Midas list for the last six years for leading some really great investments in companies um, as well. So we also highlight some of the recent press coverage we've been receiving um, as this benefit continues to grow. It's something that's been gaining a ton of traction, both with employers, employees, and also the press as well. So we'd love to hear from all of you. Uh, feel free to stop by our booth or just shoot us a quick email at founders at goodlyapp.com. Thanks. Hi. Um, hello. Hi, uh, I'm Ning. I'm a co-founder and CTO at HealthShripa. Our mission is to help all Americans access healthcare through affordable health insurance. And we do that with a product that helps them find, enroll in, and use affordable health insurance on the ACA marketplaces, which means that they qualify for subsidies to reduce their monthly costs. Uh, so far, we have enrolled over 1.8 million people in health insurance. Uh, that's 7% of ACA enrollment this past year. Uh, We've also helped those people save $6 billion on their uh, annual health insurance premiums. Uh, our company is generating in excess of $10 million in revenue per year, and we are highly profitable. And we are up uh, 3x year over year in terms of that revenue. Uh, here's our tech stack. Uh, Ruby on Rails is there as mainly an API. We're mostly in React. We do a lot of data analysis and data science work in Python uh, and R. Uh, we also have some backend data products that are supported by Elasticsearch and uh, MapReduce, actually. So why work here? Uh, first off, impact. You're going to be working on increasing access to healthcare by reducing the uninsured rate in America. Our typical consumer household makes $21,000 a year total in income. And by using us, they save $9,000 on their health insurance per year. Uh, we're also in a unique market position. We are the first company with direct API access to the back end that powers healthcare.gov. It's not easy to get that. Uh, on the consumer side, we can fill the outreach gap as the administration rolls back their outreach efforts. And on the enterprise side, we are becoming the primary integrator for insurers, employers, and brokerages to enroll their consumers in health insurance with subsidies. The market opportunity is huge. 45 million Americans lack health insurance today. The, the work is interesting. We did all this with four engineers. So you're going to be doing full stack work, owning entire products end to end. Here are some recent projects, like a health insurance recommendation engine, that government API integration that had to pass a uh, FedRAMP level audit, meaning we can be a government contractor now. Uh, and you have to architect the site to support 20x traffic spikes, because everybody waits the last day to sign up. Um, like, as mentioned, small team, own the whole product. You can work in San Francisco, Sacramento, or remotely, and we're family friendly and flexible in hours. If you're interested, please find me. Uh, I'm in the booth, or uh, I'm at the, uh, the middle of the room in the expo. Uh, you can also reach out to careers at healthstripper.com. Here's the rest of the team. Uh, like I said, join us to help reduce the uninsured rate in America.
Hey, I'm Paul, co-founder and CTO of Human Interest. We're helping everyone save for retirement with the power of software. Uh, cool, okay. Um, our product is a company benefit, not a pure software product. What we've done is we've built a 401k perfect for startups and small businesses. We automate away all the paperwork and all the compliance work and sync with payroll. Plus, employees can invest with a single click. Uh, it's sort of like using Wealthfront inside of a 401k. It's so, our mission is super important and super large scale. Of small businesses in the United States, only 20% of them offer their employees a 401k, and yet the 401k is the primary means of retirement savings that Americans have. Um, with technology and, and automation, we're able to make this rea a reality at even small five, 10 person businesses, all the way up to 1,000 person companies. So we did Y Combinator back in 2015, me and my co-founder, Roger. Uh, my co-founder has started many companies before. This is his third successful startup. I've been in the startup scene for very long. I actually interned at Justin TV before they were Twitch. Um, flash forward, you know, four years ago, the company was me and Roger in my kitchen. Now we're a team of 65 people downtown San Francisco. And most importantly, we're helping over 1,000 startups and small businesses save for retirement. Um, most cool of all is that 75% of our customers have never offered a 401k before us, which is strong validation that we're able to expand this market by using technology and automation. We're looking for back-end leaning engineers. Now, one of our engineers has been known to say, coding is the easiest part of my job. That's not to say that the job is easy. What we're looking for are engineers who want to go ahead and work closely with product managers, stakeholders like salespeople and customer support people and help define our product. If you're someone who wants to start a company yourself someday, this is a great opportunity to learn that skill and really help build a, a rapidly growing business. Um, our tech is pretty JavaScript heavy, full stack TypeScript, right? Uh, Node.js and Postgres on the back end, uh, React and GraphQL on the front end and middle stack. But really, it doesn't matter. If you don't know it, we'll teach you. What we're actually looking for are people who are excited about working on mission-critical projects, like joining a three-person team, rewriting our core accounting system. Um, our culture is smart, humble, and hardworking. Some of us are college dropouts. Some of us went to MIT. If you're that way, too, you'll fit right in. So really excitingly, our, our investor from our Series A actually quit his job as a VC to join and be our CEO. Um, our Series B is imminent, and our founders, me and my co-founder, we're working really hard to get the next line of products out the door, like the IRA and HSA. So if you're really excited to join a company that's at an inflection point, come talk to us. Thank you so much. Hi. Hi, everyone. My name is Samir Magani. I'm co-founder and CEO of Instawork. Uh, we're a mobile app that connects gig workers with hospitality businesses like hotels, uh, restaurants, catering companies. If you're wondering why I'm in Black Bistro, stay tuned. Uh, th the answer to the question why you should work at Instawork is the same answer to the question, what do we do? Um, we help people get jobs. If we're successful, there will be more employment in the world. If you're a small business owner, a blue collar worker, hospitality worker, there is no work at a startup expo. There is no LinkedIn. You rely on Craigslist or sign on the window. We solve that by building effectively an API for labor. Um, it's as easy as uh, requesting an Uber or Lyft. A, a business can come onto our app, request a bartender or a dishwasher. We facilitate the, the curation of, of the labor pool. We facilitate the matching, billing, and insurance. We've raised almost $30 million, uh, in, including our Series A, which was from Bill Gurley at Benchmark. We just raised our Series B a few months ago and announced it uh, because of our rapid growth. And we're looking for great engineers and data scientists uh, uh, to help us accelerate the, the great growth we're already seeing. We use a very uh, modern tech stack, and I want to highlight two particular things that we're doing. We're investing in uh, new serverless technologies to help us build uh, more infrastructure scalably. Uh, we also built an in-house uh, framework to make mobile app development uh, uh, faster called Hyperview, which I encourage all of you to check out. Our core engineering values are respecting the team, respecting the user, and respecting the craft. Uh, I also want to highlight one of our four company values, which is empathy, uh, uh, which is related to the last point and why, explains why I'm in Black Bistro today. When uh, Jeff Ralston was up talking about why you should join a startup, or if you ever desire to join a startup, the most important thing to know is you want to be close to your users. Most of us are not dishwashers. We've never owned a restaurant. And so at Instawork, every single employee has to actually work a gig. And it's the reason why Debarshi, Adam, and myself are dressed in black bistro attire today. If you're excited about inventing the future of work, we'd urge you to come check us out. We'd be excited to meet you. Thank you.
Hey everyone, um, I'm Tarek, CEO and co-founder at Kalshi. So Kalshi is a global betting site where people can bet on anything with anyone. What this means is you can bet on things like, will Brexit happen by the end of the month? Two, who will win the Oscars? Our vision is to allow people to capitalize on what they know and have opinions on. Everyone has an opinion, so being able to convert those opinions into bets on our platform makes for a really big market opportunity. There are no prediction markets in the US today, and we're on track to be the only legal one. This is super exciting because we're setting ourselves to access an untapped market with no competition. We're looking for a talented engineer to join and help us shape the future of our product. Joining Kalshi entails getting exposed to all pa parts of our business. You'd be working on the backend infrastructure of a state-of-the-art trading exchange. You'd also be developing a seamless and simple user in interface for people who have actually never traded before and have no idea what trading is. And finally, you'd be exposed to deploying machine learning models on our trade data for our market surveillance procedures. Luana and I have both studied computer science and math at MIT. We have extensively worked in tech and trading. We're a super small team, super hardworking, and we're super excited about changing how markets are seen and traded on today. If you're interested in talking to us, you can find us at our booth after this. Thanks. All right, hey guys, uh, my name is David, uh, co-founder of Keeper. So we are an AI bookkeeper for gig workers. Uh, and what does that mean? So let's talk quickly about the problem that we're trying to address. There are 50 million gig workers right now in the United States. Uh, so think people like Uber drivers, uh, freelance designers, real estate agents, uh, et cetera. And as a population, uh, they are massively overpaying on taxes. Uh, if you're full-time, it can be as much as 2,000 or more a year. And why is that? So, as unlike traditional employment, uh, as a gig worker, you have to track your business expenses. Uh, so things like phone bill or like business travel. And the traditional way that's done is by like keeping a shoebox full of receipts or like plugging things into a spreadsheet. Um, and people do a terrible job of this and miss out on a bunch of money. So what we've built at Keeper uh, is a simple system. Our users link their bank account with us. We use their work profile in conjunction with machine learning uh, to find their business expenses, and then we let them know about it over text. Uh, so it's really a chat-based interface. As far as, the as far as the tech stack is concerned, uh, it's, being, it's built, the, the product is built in React and Node, um, Python for the data science, uh, so all of your standard stuff. Um, so we were in the most recent YC batch. Right now, the full-time uh, employees are just myself, my co-founder, Paul. Uh, Paul comes from a product management background. He went to Harvard. He worked at Square and Amplitude. I come from uh, five years of experience in quantitative trading, so data scientists. Um, and we're looking essentially for a founding engineer who will drive the engineering decisions of our company going forward. Uh, this is sort of a unique role because neither myself nor my co-founder come from a strictly uh, software engineering background. Um, so, thank you. Hey guys, I'm Lior, I'm the CEO of Lob.com, and we actually went through Y Combinator in the summer of 2013. Uh, our current vision is to make the world programmable. And what does that mean? So right now, our current mission is to allow businesses to connect APIs that allow them to access the offline world through the online world. So we have two products. Our first product is an address verification API. And if any of you have ever been on Amazon.com and you're at the checkout page, and you type your address in the shipping, and you get it wrong, you get that pop-up that says, did you mean this address? Well, we power that behind the scenes and not just for companies that are operating in the US, but all over the world. And our second product is a print and mail API. So think of a, com think of a company like Comcast, who at the end of the month needs to send statements. We make that so they can do it all automatically without doing it manually, which was the old fashioned way. Um, so we've been around for six years. We're on pace to do around $80 million this year. Um, and we power some of the biggest companies in the world. Um, right now, we are the 61st biggest company within Y Combinator by valuation, and by the end of the year, uh, you might see some news that make us in the top 25. So, okay, our technology. 
So all the code that I wrote back in the day in Node is no longer scaling, so we're moving to Go and Elixir. So we're looking for people that are really excited about scale-type problems. Uh, our machines right now uh, are our systems. We power around 100 million API requests a day. Um, and some of the biggest problems that we're working on is on the address verification product, when someone submits a single line address to us, being able to break down that address into its component parts and figure out if that address is deliverable or not. So that problem in the US is a little bit easier because we have the USPS. But there's 280 plus countries out there that do not have a postal authority or high quality data. So we need people to help us solve that, solve that problem. The second one is we send a lot of mail. So one out of four households has received a piece of mail from us. That means that we have to figure out where to print all that mail. And so on a daily basis, when we get all those API requests, we have to go and figure out where we're going to send it to, internationally in the US. That routing technology is a really hard optimization problem, and we're looking for people to come in. Dogs. <laughs> Interesting. Anyways, the most important. <laughs> ah. The most important part is our culture. So one of the things that I'm trying to do is create a culture where people want to stay for 30 plus years. And so outside of some technology, I really want to make sure that people who come want to help us build a really progressive culture. Whatever people are doing in Silicon Valley, people are staying for 1.x years. And so we really have taken everything that people are doing, kind of thrown it out the window, and we're trying and building our culture from scratch and doing really creative, uh, creative things. So if you want to hear some of our progressive ideas on how we're building out our culture and how we want people to stay for 30 plus years, come and find us. Thanks. And we love dogs. What's up, everyone? My name is Chris Wynn. I'm the co-founder of LogDNA. We're in the DevOps space. So we have an engineering product built by engineers. And what we do is we help engineering teams debug and monitor production issues. What that really means is when shit hits the fan, you look at us first. Right? So how we do this is that we aggregate all the server and application logs into one powerful platform. So we work with over 3,000 customers. Many of our customers are, are, are in the booth. Um, $35 million in funding. The real truth is when we graduated YC, we were going to die. We did one pivot with 17 k left in the bank, and three years later, $35 million in the bank. Such a crazy journey, and we're only getting started. Great investors like um, the OG, YC, Gary Tan, Alexa Ohanian are investors. And also emergence capital, so they went public with Zoom, um, Zoom conferencing. Our tech stack is Node, Mongo, Vue.js, Kubernetes, Rust, and Elastic. So pretty damn modern. Our customers are the who's who's that you guys definitely know. So at high scale, we have Reddit, Instacart, all the scooters on the road from Lime. But what's pretty cool is we power IBM Cloud's global infrastructure for logging, so they use our technology. And even IBM Watson uses us, which is pretty gnarly. Um, you want to learn from the best. So even I'm learning as well. So we have um, great leaders from Facebook, Heroku, NVIDIA, and eBay. I want to talk about our core values and company values, which really resonates to me. We have this um, company value called Hot Pie. So I got the Hot Pie character from uh, Game of Thrones. But H is honesty. We're going to be honest with each other. We're, we're going to disagree, which is awesome. O is open communication, which is super, super important. T is trust. P for us is passion. So you want to be passionate about the idea you're working on. But most importantly, life is short. You want to be passionate with the people that you work with. I is idea, and this whole notion of thinking outside the box doesn't exist in our world. I'm more focused on what if no box existed, what do we do? And ease execution. So we've been growing rapidly. We, we raised six months ago Series B. We tripled our ARR in six months. So it's the best problems to have. So much data that we had to build a new, new Kafka called Buzzsaw, and we're going to open source that. Uh, and we're going to have great mentorships across the board. So our VP of engineering was number 200 at Facebook, left at 7,000. And great players are going to win games, but my goal is to win a championship, and I'd love to do it with all you guys in the room. So if you're down to work hard, if you're down to take crazy risks, but most importantly, have fun, my name is Chris Wynn. I'm the one in the pink shirt. would love to connect with you guys. Thank you. Hi, I'm Erica, co-founder of Modern Health. 
I'm excited to share with all of you that just two weeks ago, Crunchbase named Modern Health the number one startup of 2019. So we are the first mental health platform for companies. And we're powered by a diverse and close-knit team of 20 people from gaming, healthcare, and security. We're flipping the mental health industry on its head. Depression is the number one leading worldwide cause of disability. And whether your employer actually has the leading health benefits, um, Modern Health is actually here to actually provide a pro proactive solution for anyone who wants to proactively manage stress or get ahead of depression and anxiety. We have a pretty modern health stack, Python, Django, GraphQL for the front end, and we empower all our engineers at Modern Health to not just release product development, but also to, um, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm very vulnerable and uh, nervous right now, so I'm actually going to just read from the notes. <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> sorry, guys. Hope you don't mind. I tried to memorize it two minutes before the talk. So Python, React, and GraphQL for the front end, and we live the DevOps philosophy where we make data-driven decisions um, with monitoring and alerting, and we empower all our engineers with owning not just feature development, but also infrastructure. We've tripled in just the last three quarters. We've raised over $11 million from Kleiner Perkins, Y Combinator, and Jared Leto. I know. <laughs> and as I mentioned, we were selected as the number one ranked startup globally in 2019. And I'm doing a very poor representation right now. All right, why join Modern Health? More important than all of that, we live what we sell. So the well-being of all our employees is our most important value. People legitimately love working at Modern Health. Um, join us and make your days truly, sorry, join us and spend your days truly making people around the world happier. Thank you. All right, how's it going, folks? Uh, so we're New Front Insurance. We're in the commercial insurance industry, and so this is an industry where uh, companies spend over $500 billion a year on insurance. And it's foundational to our economy. Every business needs it, and yet it provides a terrible client experience. And so what we're doing is we're building a full stack startup, which means that we build software and a technology platform to support our own operations and provide a service to our clients. Um, and we've had crazy growth. I call it like white knuckle growth. We started 2018 with 135 clients, and we have almost 3,000 clients today. So if you look at our technology, what's the goal of the technology that we're building? It's to deliver an amazing experience to our clients when they transact and manage insurance. On the back end, we're using TypeScript and Go microservices. On the front end, we've got React plus hooks, and infrastructure is pretty standard with Heroku, CircleCI, Datadog for telemetry. In terms of our team, we're a 19-person engineering team growing. We've got four people starting in the next few weeks. And we're a diverse group. We, we bring people in from the insurance industry, for me, I'm in the middle of my career. I've got a couple young kids. We've got parents and grandparents on staff, people that have been in insurance for like 30 years. Uh, so it's a really interesting team to work, to work with that draws from these two different worlds. Um, culturally, we work directly with our users. So we're sitting in the same room, and when you ship something, you know, you're solving real problems in a live operational environment, and you can walk down the hall and see people using your software later that day if you shipped it in the morning, let's say. And then finally, we have measurable, visible successes. So we're a very well-instrumented and metricized business. It's a, it's a pretty well-understood type of business to be a commercial insurance broker. Um, and so when you ship software and impact those metrics, you can see it uh, and point to your success, which is a lot of fun. Thanks. So that's New Front. Hi everyone, my name is Darina, I'm one of the founders of Open Phone. So what is Open Phone? We give you a business phone number in an app on your cell phone. 
We're building the modern business phone. You would be surprised, but the solutions on the market today and in today's day and age, uh, 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 sorry, sorry, in today's day and age, the phone you use for your business can do so much more for you. And we're really exciting to build the future of the business phone. We launched just a year ago, and we were a part of YC Summer 18 batch, and we already have 4,000 paying customers. So we really need your help to help us continue building the product quickly. This is our stack. We have mobile apps, iOS and Android. We're also working on the web app. There are many very challenging problems for you to solve. And if you want to work on a product that is used daily by a lot of people that rely on it for their business, you have the right, the, the right product. And we, um, again, we're solving a big problem in a, in a massive market. We have a small team, uh, small but mighty, and uh, we recently cr closed our seed round. So um, if you want to build the future of communications, come talk to us. We'll be over there, open phone, and um, have a great day. Thanks. Hi there, I'm Nick. I'm one of the co-founders of OutSchool, um, previously a high school teacher and also the first engineer hire at uh, Airbnb. So OutSchool is a marketplace of live online classes for kids. And we're different than most uh, of other ed tech companies. We're different because we're a, a marketplace, a consumer marketplace that directly brings together parents and teachers and learners. And we're different because of the format, live, online, small group, video chat classes that make learning social and engaging. Our product is broad, including both a marketplace and the communication tools for teachers to run their classes and communicate with kids. We have a modern web app. This is our tech stack. We build on other tools where possible, including building on Zoom's API to power our video chat. Currently, the Eng team is five people, and we're looking to hire five more engineers by the end of this year. So here's three reasons to consider OutSchool. First, we have a great team, including experienced founders who are focused on building the company intentionally. Second, by joining OutSchool, you can have an immediate and positive impact. Our product is already used by 1,000 teachers and 30,000 families. There are teachers earning a full-time living teaching on OutSchool. And every day, we hear from our users how OutSchool is making a difference in their lives. Finally, we have a great business, a product that people love, 5x growth last year, a sustainable business model, Network Effect Business, a Series A from Union Square Ventures last fall, the capital to grow our team. Our biggest challenge is hiring engineers. Thank you. All right, you guys having fun? Yeah? All right. We're running a little bit up behind schedule. We got about a 15 to 20 minute break. Do not go far because we're going to get right back out here. Start at 3, 3.30, and then, yo, and by the way, there are a lot of people over there who would love your seat. So let's take a quick break. Don't go far. Thank you.
You don't want to hear me talk, so we're going to have the first uh, of the second batch come out, uh, and I believe it's Patch. So give a quick round of applause, stretch a bit. All right. Hey guys, uh, I'm Wei, CTO and co founder at Patch Medical. Uh, I'm also Australian, so I can be pretty direct. And I just wanted to say, uh, come work at Patched. Um, and I mean it, but this applies for you if you are somebody that deeply cares about people. Uh, it's intrinsic to what we do. Um, you're obsessed about solving difficult problems. You want to optimize your career for growth and new experiences. And you want to make a disproportionate amount of impact and have a disproportionate amount of responsibility. So um, what we do is we are triaging and preventing readmissions due to a condition called sepsis in patients that have been discharged from hospital. We do this with wearables and deep learning. Sepsis is the body's dysregulated response to infection um, and actually affects more than six times, um, six times more Americans uh, than breast cancer each year. It's also a very personal problem for me because my co-founder had 18 episodes of it. So, uh, however, we have built and validated an algorithm on 48,000 patient records that beats current standard of care measures on metrics like area under the curve, uh, sensitivity, specificity, and positive predictive value. We're a highly technical team backed by key medical advisors in the space, and we're looking for machine learning and software engineers to help us build out our system for FDA approval. Really, it's only because of recent changes in regulation that healthcare is ready for AI and what we are trying to do. So, to summarize, um, our vision is that no one should die from preventable episodes of sepsis. Uh, we believe we can address this with wearable monitoring and deep learning models to predict that. And we really just need the right people to build this company with us. Um, so if anything that I've spoken about today uh, is interesting at all to you, please come find us at our table. Uh, we'd love to have a chat, uh, get to know you, and tell you more about Patched. Thank you, guys. Hi there. I'm uh, Lyle Avery, founder of Pull Request, and uh, we build code review as a service. That's the combination of a network of on-demand reviewers with automation to make sure that code quality is high on every team. Now, every person in this room commits bug-free code every time. Think about your teammates that don't. We're here to help them. <laughs> Why does this matter? Why are we building what we're building? Today, we process three million lines of code and tag it. That allows us to categorize when people make bugs, what causes them, and their solutions. We're building the AI that Jeff talked about today at the beginning of this uh, session. We work with the three major providers to make the seamless process of code review uh, possible, GitLab, GitHub, and Bitbucket. We, of course, love uh, GitLab best. Our stack is mostly Go and React, but because we can review in any language, we actually have projects across everything from Clojure to Elm to, uh, uh, well, no C++ on uh, Apache yet. Uh, if you want to build the future of development with us, we'd love to talk to you. We're hiring for everything. And uh, really, if you love and are passionate about engineering, you can work with us and our thousands of world-class engineers. Again, I'm Mal Avery. Thank you. Uh, have a great day. Hey, my name is Gregory Koberger, and I am the CEO of Readme. So we help companies build an amazing developer experience for APIs. Uh, how many of you have used APIs? Pretty much all of you. What's your favorite API? Yell some out. Scale. Scale? OK, Alex. Uh, so the reason that you love uh, things like Scale and uh, Stripe and Twilio is because they have beautiful um, interactive documentation. And that's what we bring to thousands and thousands of other API companies out there. Uh -oh. There we go. Uh, so as far as tech goes, it's pretty basic. We use Node, Mongo, Angular, React, um, all that stuff. But we're letting people now send API logs to us. So we're going to be dealing with a lot of big data going forward. So if anything like that interests you, um, taking tons of data and making it very easy for people to kind of understand and debug their stuff, uh, we're a great place to go. Oh, I keep going forward by mistake. 
Anyway, uh, that's that. And next slide. Okay, this is where I bribe you. So uh, aside from like having great benefits, um, good pay, all that kind of stuff, uh, we also do quarterly offsites uh, with the entire team to bring people from all over uh, the country in. So we've done Hawaii, Austin, Chicago, a bunch of really cool places recently. Um, so we do that for product roadmaps and stuff like that. So that's a lot of fun. And lastly, I want to talk about how we interview. So one thing that we do that's interesting is uh, we do two things when people interview. Um, it's a little bit different than other companies. The first thing that we do is we make sure that you know exactly what's going on the entire time. We send out a website with everything you need to know, uh, who's going to be interviewing, what they're going to be asked, exactly what to prepare. And second is we have people bring their own project. We don't give you a tech project to work on. Uh, we let you bring whatever you want to work on because we want to see something that you're excited about. We want to see you work in a code base that you know and see how you work. Um, so we're working really hard to kind of change how people do technical interviews. Uh, this is a team that you'd be working with. Uh, we're a bit bigger than this. We're at uh, a little over 20 now. Um, we're looking for front end, back end, full stack. We're looking for people who like data, um, back end databases, things like that. Uh, we're looking for dev evangelists and support engineers as well. So if any of that sounds great, uh, come find us. And uh, we just raised a big round from Excel, so we're growing pretty quickly over the next few months. And uh, if you want to find out more, you can just type that in your command line prompt, and uh, you'll see a bunch of more information. Uh, we're in the back left, back in the other place. Uh, hope to see you soon. Thanks. All right, hi, I'm uh, Adam McKinsey, CTO and co-founder of Rescale. So let's talk about buying a supercomputer. Um, so companies that do heavy duty uh, scientific computing often have workloads that look just like this, right? And you know, they can go out and buy a supercomputer, they have a fixed set of capacity, fixed set of hardware, um, it takes months to install, and it costs a bunch of money. Um, and when it's finally up and running during those low times, they'd have a bunch of idle capacity. During peak times, um, their engineers and scientists would be waiting in queues. So why buy when you can rent? And that's what Rescale provides, is an elastic, on-demand supercomputer, um, ready to go in minutes, customized for your exact workload. So we do this by building on top of uh, the major public cloud providers, um, using the top commercial, uh, open source, and private uh, simulation software, um, enabling these customers to bring products to market faster. Um, our stack is uh, React front end, uh, Python, Django, WebTier, Postgres, and Redis, um, Java, and Drop Wizard services for all of the cluster orchestration frameworks. Again, we're doing that across all the different public cloud uh, providers. Um, so why work at Rescale? We have a great team um, headquartered here in SF. We've got 100 people, uh, but we've got people all over the globe. Uh, we have some very exciting customers doing very interesting things. So Nissan is doing their crash test analysis for all their new cars on Rescale. Um, Boom, another YC company, is designing, you know, bringing supersonic travel back. Um, it's a very interesting project. So again, we're, work, we're looking for um, all types of engineers, DevOps, front end, back end, and data. Um, so if you like any of this interests you, please come talk to me We're in the back corner. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Uh, I'm Jacob, CEO. Co-founder, Revenue Cat. We were in YC last year. We are in-app subscriptions made easy. In-app subscriptions are subscriptions on the App Store or Google Play Store on mobile. Uh, we help developers make more money with their apps. That's a great mission. We're all developers. We all like money. Uh, how do we do that? We give developers an SDK and a backend right out of the box so they can add subscriptions to their apps with just a few lines of code, get up and running in a couple days. Then we provide them with dashboards, integrations, everything they need to not have to worry about scaling the business side of their, of their app. And they can just focus on like, making their users happy. So we help them also with price testing, LTV analysis, all kinds of neat stuff. That's kind of a pain to build if you're a small team. Uh, this is our dashboard in React. That gives uh, users like a good view of like uh, developers a view of how their uh, app is monetizing. Uh, we're doing really well. I wish I could add the next month to this because it'd be like here, which is really good. We had a great month, uh, and we use some very special technologies: Python, Postgres, this one, 
React. That's pretty fancy. Uh, and then everything's on AWS and Heroku. We, we like to keep it really simple because uh, it, the more complex it is, the, yeah, it's, it's hard. Uh, OK, so we're serving like 50,000 requests per minute right now. Sometimes that peaks to 80 and we get a little sweaty. Um, we're really hiring for back end people. If you've done databases at scale especially, that's really where we need help. Like the biggest app my co-founder and I ever worked on was like 3K per minute. And so every day we're just kind of like glad it's still running. I hope we don't have any customers here. Um, uh, no, it's great. We have alarms. Everything's fine. Um, we're an engineering-driven culture. We're all engineers building products for engineers. So that's really fun. Um, we love tests. Who doesn't love tests? Uh, we have to have them. Otherwise, we would make bugs more. Uh, and developers are our customers. So yeah, if you work in back end, we're also hiring like developer support because people uh, like have, are constantly sending us intercoms and we're, we're buried. So we could use some help there too. Um, that, that's it. Thank you very much. Hey, I'm uh, Parker Conrad. I'm co-founder and CEO of Rippling. And we make HR and IT software for small businesses. Um, so I'll pause while you guys all yawn quickly. Um, <clears throat> but um, you know, if I were setting up a new company and I told you I want to set up systems to track revenue or customer data, and I said I'm thinking about setting up 100 separate databases that don't talk to each other to track the same information, and I asked you if that was a good idea, You'd all say, no, that's crazy. Why would you do that? And if I said, well, well what's wrong with that? You'd say, well, how, you know, if, if something changes in one system, are you going to manually change it in all these other systems? And how, what happens if these systems get out of sync? Or what happens if you need to add a record? Are you going to add it in 100 different places? Um, but secretly, that's the way employee data works at almost every business out there. <clears throat> because companies have usually about 100 systems where they're tracking information about employees. Most business systems, at some basic level, track things like usernames and passwords for all the company's employees. Sometimes they need to know their department, their manager. Um, and it's precisely because companies have all these different disconnected business systems that companies feel like, man, it's a lot of work. We've got too many systems around here. Like, I don't want to have yet another system. That onboarding new employees is a pain in the ass and is a lot of administrative work. And really, the way that this should work is you should have one underlying system where companies and their employees could come to hire someone, to make changes, to terminate them. And that system would handle the propagation out to everything else. That's what Rippling is, and that's what we do. Um, on the metric side, the thing we're most proud of is we have a net promoter score today that's in the high 60s. Um, a lot of startups have uh, charts of revenue that go up and to the right. This is actually our month-over-month -month growth rates for our latest financing. And so our month-over-month -month growth rates were going up and to the right. We haven't sustained up and to the right growth rates since then, but it was pretty cool <coughs> while it happened. Um, we, recently, uh, we recently raised a Series A from Kleiner Perkins. Uh, Rippling is a Series A company. We've actually uh, raised about $100 million, though. Um, and um, yeah, we'd love to talk to you. We're hiring in lots of different roles. Thanks. Hey, everyone. I'm Alex, CEO and founder of Scale. So our vision is to accelerate the development of AI applications. Almost everybody up here has mentioned AI. It's pretty hyped. Uh, and, and we actually think it's appropriately hyped. We like to say that if software is eating the world, AI is eating software. Um, and and I, think, I think one way to think about it is if you, were to, uh, if you were to place a bet on AI today, that is sort of an equivalently good bet as betting on the internet in the 80s. So while we all might be talking about it, while it might seem very abstract, the actual full net impact of AI and machine learning is likely to be extremely large over the coming decades. And that's why we're really excited about it. That's why we want to accelerate it. We want it to happen as quickly as possible. And, and really, the problem is that supervised deep learning, which is what most of the exciting results in AI are really coming from, supervised deep learning requires an incredible amount of data. So if, if we were to think about all of the areas in which we think that AI can make an incredible difference, the way to solve those problems is through supervised deep learning. And, and the real bottleneck there is that it requires a massive amount of data to get there. When we think about how 
engineering changes in an AI development paradigm, it's actually quite fundamental. So in traditional software engineering, the kind that probably all of us in the room are used to, the way that you improve your system is by writing more code. So the way in which we sort of build up these incredible systems over time is we write code, we deploy it, we figure out what's going wrong or what's going poorly, uh, and we write more code. And so we keep going on in this loop of writing more code, deploying it, figuring out what's going on, writing more code. And that's how most of the software systems in the world today get better. Now, in AI development or machine learning, there's actually a totally new way to change the performance of your system. And that's just by feeding more data to the algorithm. And so if you look at the machine learning teams or the machine learning systems in most of these companies that we really respect, like uh, Apple, Google, et cetera, the, the loop is you, you label data, you uh, retrain your model, you evaluate it, and then you feed more data to the algorithm. What we've built is an end-to-end -end API driven platform for ground truth data. So we've built a dashboard for dashboard and tool set for going through data and labeling it, an API for that data to be sent to us and for it to send us back to the, sent back to the customers, and then a customer dashboard for them to be able to look over all of that. And behind the scenes, we have a network of labelers who does do all the labeling. And uh, sorry, I'm getting a time check, so I'm going to keep I'm just going to rush through the rest. Um, and then we uh, and then we do a bunch of machine learning to accelerate the labeling. Uh, I'm going to skip this. We, we work with a bunch of great folks. A lot of customers you probably recognize, OpenAI, Waymo, Cruise, et cetera, Lyft. Um, and we've grown a lot. Just in the past year, our team has grown by more than three times. And our team is really incredible. We've raised more than $20 million from Excel, uh, Index, Greg Brockman, Nat Friedman, et cetera. Cool. Uh, check us out at our booth. All right. Hey, everyone. I'm Ilya. I'm one of the co-founders at Segment. Uh, so Segment is an analytics platform that helps companies collect uh, data around who the user is, what they're doing on the site, and then integrate it to 250 uh, tools that they would be using to analyze the data. So tools like Google Analytics, Marketo, Kissmetrics, Optimizely, BigQuery, tools like that. Uh, and so while that sounds simple, there's actually a lot of uh, customer data infrastructure underneath that. So just like AWS might have hundreds of services, we also have a lot of different services and products to help customers manage their data. Uh, so I want to highlight one, Personas, uh, which is one we started in 2017 uh, and then took to market in 2018. So we treat all of our teams at Segment as startups within a startup. Uh, so that was five engineers. Uh, they started, did the product market fit cycle and then actually you know, uh, worked in a close loop with customers. And then uh, today that business business two years in is a $10 million business just in itself. And so we launch about two of those products every year. Uh, so the segment today is 19,000 customers across 70 companies. We work with startups and then enterprises as well. Uh, and then we build data pipelines. Uh, that's basically our main job. Uh, so we get an average of about 250,000 messages every second that we're standing here. And then during Super Bowl, during uh, the Indian uh, Premier League that happens in India, it's the most streamed event, our API goes up to 750,000 messages a second. So this is within an order of magnitude of kind of the uh, world's largest APIs like uh, DynamoDB and Google Analytics. Uh, and then we do a lot of cool visualization as well in React uh, and in the front end stack. Uh, we also do a lot of open source. Uh, so we have about 500 uh, repos, 50,000 stars. So we uh, give back a lot to that community. Um, and so the actual personas, engineering managers there on the left, he's there in another building. So you should go talk to him. And then a uh, person hiring full stack is on the right. Thank you so much. Hey, everybody. We're simply insured. We are a 100% online way to buy health insurance for your small business. Um, you, all across the United States, we can instantly quote every health plan from every carrier all across the United States, 100% online application process, and 100% online management. Um, one of the things I really love about what we do is I can talk to you about our tech stack and all this, but I think I want to share with you is a customer story from uh, one of our customers from a couple years ago. She was in the ER because her husband had just had a stroke. And she realized as they frantically rushed to the emergency room that she did not have her ID card for her health insurance. 
It was 8 p.m. on a Saturday. Uh, she tried, she thought about, hey, well, maybe I'll call the insurance company. Unfortunately, insurance companies aren't open at, at 8 p.m. on Saturdays to take your phone calls. Luckily, she was a customer of Simply Insured. We've built a product called Mobile ID Cards that allowed her to log on and get access to her information instantaneously so that she could get access at the ER. That was only the first of the many messes she went through that night. She, after gave her ID card to the, the person across the desk, she, that person said, well, this isn't valid. You actually don't have insurance from this uh, company that you're paying over $1,000 a month to. She started to panic. Luckily, because she's a customer of our company, she was able to go log onto our website, call our customer support team. We were able to navigate with the person across the table from her to say, yes, you do have coverage. And she was able to get the life-saving surgery that her husband needed. The reason I share that with you is that's, that is the mission of our company. Our, our goal is to eliminate people's fear from their health insurance, and that's all the software that we build. All the stuff around quoting and applications and all that stuff is designed to make it so that when anytime anybody walks into a doctor's office, emergency room, or anything else, they are, th th that experience is amazing instead of what it is currently from current insurance companies. Um, I have some slides here, but I think my story is better. Um, we have a React and Redux front end stack, Ruby on Rails on the back end, everything runs on Amazon Web Services. Um, I think the real reason to work with us is uh, if you want to eliminate fear from health insurance, you should work at Simply Insured. We've signed up two of the largest small business focused companies in the world, Intuit and Square. They're distributing our platform to all of their small businesses. Um, it means we're growing. We've tripled the team in the last year. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's why you should join. Thanks. Hi, my name is Lester, and I'm one of the founders of Slapdash. As we've moved our work to cloud apps like GitHub, Asana, Trello, Google Docs, we've actually uh, taken a major step back in terms of human-computer interaction. We've actually thrown away decades of that work. Um, if you think about it, you can no longer search or actually even create folders around any of this work in the cloud. These are simple things that you can do on your desktop. What we effectively do is build an operating system for all of your work in the cloud. It works across all of the apps that I currently mentioned. Imagine being able to do 80% of the things that you currently do within your cloud apps in one interface. Search your own work, your company's work, close tasks, close tickets, merge pool requests. These are all things that are possible. Now, while this is a really cool project and a fun product to work on, it's also the holy grail in the productivity space. Everybody actually wants to solve this problem of integration for companies. But the winner in this space has to be neutral, and they also have to, have to have a fresh approach to the problem. The way that we do it is we build a giant graph of all the data across all of your cloud apps and your company's cloud apps. Now, that data isn't static. Anytime a change happens in one of these applications, we actually have a framework that mutates our graph to actually reflect these changes in these remote graphs. And we can't just have the data. We also have to deliver a low latency experience back to our users, similar to that of a desktop experience. So to that end, we've built a uh, database access layer that has built-in batching and coalescing. Um, everything is really, really fast by default. And lastly, this product has to be consumer grade. So our stack is really modern, TypeScript on the client side and server side, uh, GraphQL, and of course, React. So why Slapdash? Well, you're going to get to work on really, really hard problems, but at the same time, the product is actually really tangible. You're going to be able to build and then use the product that you've always wanted. Um, there's no better place to actually join a company if you're looking to be a founder in the future yourself. You're going to be able to see how everything is built from the ground up. It's just us three founders right now. And uh, our founding team is really experienced. Our co-founder, our CEO, Ivan, actually built a business unit at Facebook that's currently generating somewhere around five to seven billion dollars. Uh, our CTO, Dima, has sold three companies. He uh, rebuilt the whole infrastructure for WhatsApp, so uh, to handle up to 30 million requests per second. And this will be the third YC company that I'm gonna help get from zero to 10 million in revenue. Thank you. Hey, I'm Josh. Uh, so we're actually solving a problem that all of you are familiar with, which is hiring, because you're all looking for jobs. Um, yeah, so what we're making is a AI product that actually replaces human recruiters. Uh, and what we've done is we've actually dog fooded our own product to build a really amazing team. So if what you want is to work with a really great team, you should work at Sorceress. My co-founder was Dropbox's first chief of staff and actually paid her way through MIT by doing algorithmic trading. 
I've published machine learning papers before uh, and sold a company. Our investor was a lead investor in Box. One of our engineers, Abe, was actually the CTO of another YC company. Another one of our engineers was actually the reason that Open Door made an internship program. Another engineer in his like side project on the weekend made the state-of-the-art Python profiling system. Uh, another engineer was featured in a book about deep work. Another engineer, Tina, got a scholarship to do her own machine learning research at the Recurse Center. Part of the reason why we have such a great team is that we really care about learning and growth at Sorceress. We're happy to teach engineers how to do machine learning or how to become engineering managers. We have weekly talks, a paper club, reading group, advisors from OpenAI, and we pay for executive coaching, conferences, classes, tools, anything related to learning. We also really care about making the world a better place. We don't cure cancer, but we do help companies that do. We also do a lot of work around equalizing access to opportunity and reducing bias in the hiring process. And also, it's just really rewarding to help people find jobs that they're happy with. Now is a really good time to join Sorceress. We actually have a lot of great customers uh, and over two and a half million in annual revenue. Uh, we have a sane tech stack, Python, TypeScript, React, PyTorch, uh, all the sensible things like benefits, free meals, et cetera. And we just raised a $10 million Series A about two months ago, and we're looking to double over the next year. So if you're interested in joining a great team, come chat with us afterwards. Hi, I'm Jordan from Standard Cognition. I want to take about 20 seconds and talk to you about computer vision, because I think that's really awesome. What happens when computers can see as well as people? I think if you really brainstorm that for a second, you realize that the answer should be basically everything. Computer vision should be one of these revolutions that changes the world the same way that mobile has, the same way that internet has. But if that's true, where are all the applications? Why hasn't computer vision actually taken over the world? So we've all been thinking about this. Uh, probably everyone's thinking in their head, oh, autonomous vehicles. That's, that's the real application. But autonomous vehicles are probably 10 or 15 or even 20 years off. So what really is going to be this massive application that changes the face of the world? Something that everybody experiences. It's not just on Facebook. It's not just Google search. Something you experience day to day across the entire world. What is that going to be? It's not AV. It's checkout. Autonomous checkout in particular and inside of real stores. So this is an Amazon.com. E-commerce is less than 10% of what people buy in the real world. Where people spend money is real stores. $25 trillion a year. This market is it's, it's crazy. Um, and we spend a couple hundred billion on checkout. That's how much it costs to run cashiering across the world. So this is a massive, massive opportunity. And no one likes it. No one wants to wait in line. We spend billions of hours, human hours, just standing waiting to get to the end of a line so that we could spend money. This is the application that's going to change the world first with computer vision. This is why it's massive, but there's another reason that's important and why it's happening now. This is complex technology. It's not quite as hard as autonomous vehicles, but it is really damn hard. But the reason we can deploy this today is because we can afford to make mistakes. When our system doesn't get something right, you get catch up for free. No one dies. It's completely OK. Retailers are OK with that. Shoppers love getting ketchup for free. <laughs> and what that means is that we get to deploy this right now. In fact, it is being deployed right now. So Amazon has deployed about 10 stores just in the last six months. We deployed our first store six months ago. and are in the process of deploying multiple stores this year. This is happening really fast. Just want to take a quick couple seconds and show you why this is really cool, why this is really hard, some of the problems that we have to solve. In real time, while you're just looking at people from cameras alone, no other sensors, you have to be able to identify every possible product in the world that somebody could be holding. And it's really hard, because you don't always have a clear shot of that person. You have to be able to figure out what's happening through all the seclusion, through all the complexity of what people do inside of stores. Uh, and just to give you one more quick example, forget about what people are holding. This is called visual tracking. How do you identify people across multiple cameras and as they shop in really crowded systems? This is our store in San Francisco, by the way. How do you do this without using facial recognition? Uh, it's a really hard problem if you read the literature, completely unsolved. And this is just one of dozens of problems that we have to solve to bring this technology uh, into production. 
So if you're excited about machine learning, awesome, please come to talk to us. But if you're also excited about just production engineering, high performance computing, and even just good old fashioned engineering, backends and frontends, we do a ton of that too. Uh, please come talk to us, we'd love to talk to you. Thanks. Hi there, I'm Mark. Oops, sorry. Hi there, I'm Mark Friedman, uh, VP Engineering at Thunkable. Uh, we have a product that enables anyone to create beautiful and powerful mobile apps. Uh, we believe that almost everybody out there has an app that they wished existed in the world that will probably never be sold or distributed in any app store because it's what they want for themselves. Either they want it for themselves, they want it for their family, they want it for their team, or they want it for the world. But no one else is gonna build them. So we have a platform that enables anyone to build these apps for themselves. Uh, basically, we have a drag and drop uh, environment that lets you do beautiful UI design and a visual programming language that lets you do the minimal coding that you need to build these apps. Uh, I don't know if you can read all the small print. It's a similar stack to what everyone is talking about. Uh, React uh, on the front end, Node and Express on the back end. Uh, we use React Native on the mobile app side. Uh, GraphQL mostly now between uh, front end and back end. Uh, we do some extra stuff with Redis, uh, MongoDB for our database, and everything is done is uh, deployed in the Google Cloud using Kubernetes. Um, we're looking for basically full stack uh, engineers um, and people who are excited about the mission that we have. Uh, we are strongly committed to diversity in our company and in our hiring. And, sorry, why should you join us? So your mom will understand what you do for a living. Uh, we kind of believe that, you know, this is something that's happened to all of you already out there. You know how to build apps, you're creators in the world. But most of the people out there uh, are passive consumers of the high-tech world around them. We'd like to turn everyone into creators uh, in that world, and we believe that makes a difference in their lives, and in particular, it will help them to understand what you do for a living. So thank you. Hi, I'm Hugh. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Theorem. We're in the FinTech lending space. Uh, what we do at Theorem is we solve a really major problem, one that contributed to the financial crisis 2007. So anyone here who's ever gotten a loan from a bank, from an online lender, from a non-bank lender, a credit card company, wherever it is, that loan is probably sold to someone else by the person that you got the loan from, and that person actually funded the risk. The bank or whoever it was that gave you your loan just took a fee for enabling the transaction. The problem with this situation is that when the bank prices your loan, they're pricing it to make as many loans as possible, not to make the right loan at the right price. That causes them to make the bad loans that will put people in debt, cause defaults, and also cause investors to lose money. Theorem fixes this problem. The way we do it is we go into lenders, we build APIs that connect into their systems and say to them, hey, don't just send us the FICO score about the loans that you happen to make, send us everything. And then not only are you gonna send us everything, but we're gonna price the loan. And if you price the loan to the uh, interest rate that we set up, then you are going to have a guaranteed buyer for that loan before you've even made an offer to the borrower. Um, so we started this business uh, five years ago. We now make and fund 
over 600 million, 6 million, $60 million of loans every month. We're trying to grow that to $200 million uh, of loans over the next 18 months. We work with most of the major online lenders in Silicon Valley that you have seen in the news or gotten a loan from and are starting to work with many uh, traditional non-online lenders. The ultimate goal of Ethereum through doing all of this is to make the financial system safer so that when investors know that they're funding loans that haven't been manipulated and created in a way that's going to blow up in their face, we can provide capital more consistently to borrowers across the country and eventually across the world. Um, to build this tech stack, we rely very heavily on machine learning to build our underwriting systems, data engineers and infrastructure engineers so that we can make those offers in less than 100 milliseconds. And we're looking for people to join our small but fast growing engineering team. We're probably pretty different from most of the venture backed startups out there. We have built for scale and not for, um, not, not for hiring as, uh, as many people as you need. We've tried to focus on having a small team that is more of a kind of combination of a tech startup and academic research environment. We try to focus on really deep technical problems. Um, our team right now is only 23 people, but we've been able to grow to over $15 million in revenue off of that. So if you want to come work at a team working on hard technical problems that have a very meaningful impact on uh, everyone in this room and everyone that you've known in this room, uh, th then give us, a, uh, give us a ring. Thanks. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Ethan, I'm co-founder and CEO of VoiceOps. Uh, we help customer, uh, call centers understand their customer conversations. So uh, we work with uh, sort of like the classic call center you see in like movies. Uh, these are like sprawling sales floors. Uh, there's like loud music in the background, they're pounding the phones. Dudes are like fist bumping when they close a deal. It's that kind of place. And they're making tons of calls, like thousands by the hour. And so the biggest problem for executives at these call centers is like, how do you figure out what's actually happening in these calls? Are my reps actually saying the right things to my customers to close all the deals? Um, and so what we do is we start with these sprawling call centers that are like making lots of calls. And then we take the recordings of those calls, we transcribe them to text, um, and then we go sentence by sentence on those transcripts and figure out all the important things that happened on each call, and then ultimately ends up in a dashboard. So we go from like messy human conversations to structured data that you can use to pinpoint problems and make your call center work better. Uh, we have lots of traction. We've raised $11 million, have customers you've heard of like Square. Um, we're growing 25% month over month right now, so it's crazy time. Um, in terms of our engineering team, so I think like what's really exciting is that if you come to VoiceOps, you're going to be engineer number three. So even though we have you know lots of traction, you know things are really exciting right now. It's still a small team, and so you're going to come on day one and get to own lots of stuff and make a big impact and work on really interesting problems. Some of those problems are like pretty like uh, like you know sort of frontier. Like how do you actually take messy human dialogue? and make sense of it and structure it in a way that is really accurate. Um, how do you then optimize, or sort of scale that up uh, and, and optimize some of those, those data pipelines? So those are the kinds of things you'll get to work on. Um, you know, I think like, the, the best thing about voice ops is the, the, the team. Um, we have a really tight-knit community. Uh, like our, our sort of view of the world is like we're experience agnostic, so we don't care if you have 10 years of experience or zero years. What we care about is two things. Are you really smart? And are you really tenacious? And if you have those things, then we want you on the team. Um, and what that translates to is we all really trust each other to get the work done. And we're all like really intense. This is like honestly not a work-life balance kind of place. We work really hard. Um, but <laughs> just to be candid, but, but it's really fun because like, it, we're, we're all really intense. We're on a mission together. And uh, it's like one of the most rewarding experiences that any of us have ever had. So come talk to us. We'd love to, to chat. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Hanan. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Volancy. We build uh, autonomous aerial delivery solutions. That is, uh, we build uh, and operate uh, long-range, high-payload, uh, unmanned aerial vehicles for point-to-point -point deliveries of time-sensitive items. We started uh, three and a half years ago. We're um, a YC Winter 17 company backed by Lightspeed Ventures. We've raised over $25 million in venture funding. And we're a team of 30 plus uh, engineers and operators. 
um, based in the Bay Area. Uh, we have several customers and are post revenue uh, serving clients from the all the way from the U.S. Department of Defense to Caterpillar and uh, Merck. There are three different applications uh, for our service. Um, we sell to the defense customers for surveillance and critical supply deliveries. We sell to commercial customers for shipments of spare parts uh, to reduce downtime costs. And we sell to medical customers for deliveries of uh, vaccination and blood and other medical supplies. And we've done tons of uh, uh, really exciting, cool projects. We we recently launched in the Bahamas. We've uh, done inter island deliveries in Puerto Rico, in Africa, um, in Southeast Asia, all over the world. Um, our vision is that we want to uh, enable and build the future of autonomous aerial mobility. We're starting out with cargo because it's a lower risk uh, category. Uh, but uh, obviously we want to uh, change the landscape of transportation and, and we're really thinking about changing the world significantly on how we move things and, and transport people point to point. Just uh, to give you an overview of what I mean by long range and high payload, uh, this is our product portfolio. Uh, that ranges from 10 pounds to 200 pounds, 60 miles to over 1,000 miles. Uh, just quickly about our team, um, we are a robotics first company, we're not building autonomous planes, we're building flying robots, and if you're interested in anything around surrounding robotics and autonomy, uh, please come talk to us. These are the current openings that are, you'll also find on our website, and um, we're, we're going to be out there, so uh, please, uh, please come by and, and have a chat, and we look forward to speaking with you all. Thank you. Hi everyone, Blue, last presentation of the day, so remember Zyper. Um, so we just think the world would be, would be a better place without Facebook ads. So what we do, yes, yes. So um, we help brands um, basically bypass Facebook to build community. So we've built a backend system that uses a lot of computer vision, location data, complex queries to help brands connect with their fans to drive engagement insights and sales. So we were in YC winter 18. We just raised a series A. We're on track to do 6 million in ARR this year. We have brands like Nike, Lyft, Dior, um, Kellogg's, and in San Francisco. Here is our tech stack. So Python, React, native apps, um, TensorFlow on machine learning, lots of cool stuff there. And engineering challenges, so four pillars, um, loads of cool features in our roadmap. We're about to launch interest-based communities, so you can come in and talk about things that aren't brand-centric. And on the front end in mobile, we're opening up our API, so brands can build on top of our stack. Um, we are doing a lot of really cool stuff on the data machine learning side. We've just filed our first patent for the computer vision work that we're doing, and a lot of predictive analytics and recommender systems. So here is our product and engineering team. Um, we are really small. Um, there is 12 of us in the team right now, and I really want to keep head count super low. So uh, if you want to really be contributing and making a real impact, then that's what we're looking for. We are hiring three roles that I'm hoping to fill like today. So front end, back end, data science, and we're also looking for a product manager and UX designer. So uh, that is it. The day is over. If you want Reese's Pieces, we are in the back. Thank you, Ryan, as well. <laughs> All right, that's it. You don't want to hear from me. Did you guys have fun? Did you guys find a company that you want to go over there and chat with that you haven't already chatted with? All right. If you're even thinking about leaving, come to me, and I will buy you some boba. So don't leave. There's boba in the back. The companies are excited to meet with you. Thank you so much for making it over. Let's all head back over there. All right. <laughs> <laughs>